we are going to take a look at the basic navigation inside of Cinema 4D. Now, for starters, you want to have your left hand toward the lower left hand side of your keyboard, and, your, and of course your right hand always at the mouse. What we're going to do is, if you hold down on the Alt button and left click, when I say click, just click, then you'll be able to drag and rotate around your object, whatever it might be. Now, if you want to zoom in, you can simply use the scroll wheel on your mouse, go up and down, and you can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. If you'd like to do that quicker, you can, again, hold down on the Alt button, right click and drag, and you can zoom in and out much quicker, depending on how you'd like to do that. Sometimes it's easier to take steps. Also, if you Alt, middle click and drag, you can move around your viewport and pan left to right or up and down. So these combined together, alt left clicking and dragging, alt middle clicking and dragging, and alt right clicking and dragging. This is all usually to the left to the right. Alt left click is left and right moving around and then up and down and it's left to right when you zoom in and out. Moving the mouse up and down doesn't really doing it. It doesn't really do anything. <coughs> you alt, middle click of course, panning, up, down, left, right. Now, these buttons up here I want to draw attention to. Don't do much the same thing. If you just click on this, you can do the same exact thing as if you would alt, left click. And here, same thing as, as if you would alt right click. And here, of course, the same as if you would alt middle click. Of course, that's usually, usually undesirable because you're usually modeling something or painting something right here in this area. So if I were you, I'd certainly try to learn how to use the alt click com combos to determine how you're seeing what you're seeing and get it where you need it to be. Now there's one more thing I want you to know about these buttons up here. Even though they do much the same thing as your um, alt and mouse key combos, if you right click on these things, they work a little bit differently. I like, see this is actually zooming in and out instead of panning around. So if you right click on it, it works as the zoom. If you left click on it, it just pans around. If you right click on this, this actually changes the perspective. So if you see this is like extreme perspective, if we move the mouse to the right, we get more of a parallel perspective. Mm -hmm. So, and also, if you right click on this, you actually rotate the camera on another axis. So we can actually turn it upside down, topsy turvy. Now, if you do that, <coughs> say you zoom in, you, uh, you're looking at something, you get uh, a little disoriented. If you'd like to undo that or go back to the previous state actually get the right level because see we're still a little bit slanted here <coughs> if you control shift Z a few times just control shift and press the Z key a few times you can undo where you are viewing so that all the control shift Z is undoing your moves to the navigation port now, if your camera is locked, of course, I'll talk about cameras later. If your camera is locked, then this won't do anything. And then also, if you want to go back, Control-Shift-Y will bring you back to those positions that you were at. So, that's the undo and the redo of the viewport navigation. Next, I want to go over basic object types or primitive objects. If you click and drag or just click and hold down here, you'll see a, a list of different objects to choose from. First, let's talk about the cube. If we just click, we'll get a cube. Under these, here are the attributes and the object type. We got this list of um, basic attributes here. If we, um, we can enter a number here and get the number of segments we want along the x-axis, or we can just click and use the scroll wheel here, or if we just hover over the fields, we can adjust them without even clicking on them. And we can also change the height of this object and, and the 
any kind of dimension we want. And we can also click and drag on this and get much the same result. Or we could use these little orange handles in the viewport. Either way, you get the same result. And under the basic uh, properties of this, it's just the name of the cube. So we can name this my cube. And we can see that change here. And we can determine um, simple things, whether it's visible in the editor or not. Or it's visible in the renderer, which is the same as clicking on these little dots here. And I'll discuss more of that later. Next, I want to take a look at the sphere here. We go to its object properties. We can see we can adjust the radius, how big it is, and by just the same, we can click on these little orange handles. <coughs> and of course, the segments, which determines its resolution in the polygons. We can also change the type, so if we don't like all those points at the top there, we can change this. We can use the scroll wheel just the same, or we can click and drag and see what we have octahedron so we get a different result here just uh, different methods of having the cube and you'll notice that the segments stay the same even though we change them here because it doesn't quite work the same way we also have hemisphere which is really useful if you're if you want to do an outside landscape to see you have your ground underneath here then you want a sky you want a big dome so if we make this really large we can just Imagine this, we can have a texture on here and it'll begin, it can be our sky and our uh, clouds, anything we want. We can go back to the objects and bring that uh, radius back down. And so there's a, there's a variety here. There's a few different things to choose from.